Okay, one of our viewers uh, said, could you do a quick tip on negative spaces, especially if one is exploring contemporary art? Well, let's put a positive spin on that. Nothing has confused the public more than contemporary art, art, a lot of times we'll call it abstract art. Contemporary covers a broad area. But uh, people don't understand what abstract artists or contemporary artists are doing. Well, here's one thing they're doing. Uh, they're working with flat space. Not working with, well, they might, some of them might be working with images, but go all the way back into the 20th century, the early, early part of the 20th century, you find that artists were no longer working with images. There was a period of time when the only thing that was important was that flat space. And what were they doing with that flat space? Well, first of all, they were dividing it into two parts. And that's where the terms negative space and positive space evolved from that abstract expressionist movement. Here's a real good example of an abstract expressionist and a good example of negative and positive space. So in this case, the positive space is where the action is taking place, or the brush action, you might say, is taking place. And so the brush action is obviously the black here. That's the positive space. The space around that is the negative space. Okay, move on into uh, uh, the 21st, of the late 20th century and the 21st century when realism started coming back into painting. That language lived. And it still lives among realistic painters. So what does it mean? It means that the space around an image, or this is one meaning, the space around the image is the negative space. The space occupied by the image is the positive space. Now, if you compare these two, you see they're not that different, except one has an image and one doesn't. You see that they're occupying the space, the positive space is occupying the space much the same in the abstract as it is in the realistic painting. Uh, this is, I'll show you some uh, other examples of this. So let's take this one away and we'll look at how uh, there's some variations on that. Now this one is maybe just a little bit more obvious because by the time, or no this was earlier, Matisse, no Matisse was later, uh, by the time Matisse got hold of the whole idea of negative and positive space. It still would be uh, referred to as contemporary. He was using the, an image, but flattening the image. So we can see here we go, example, Andrew Weil, uh, one of his studies for Christina. And, of course, this is a vignette, meaning that the, the, the study doesn't go all the way to the edge of the paper to make uh, a total uh, picture or image. But you can see the positive she's occupying the positive space and then he's create the, created this dark wash around her as a negative space and you can see here the flattening of the figure belongs in the, neg in the positive space the space around that is the negative space so that's another approach so and this and this I think shows you how uh, as as the time moved on and artists began to move back to images, they began they were still thinking in terms of positive and negative space negative space that came apart became a part of the language, just as so much in the abstract art became a part of our visual language uh, in the realistic art, and so the two are really not that separate uh, when it comes down to how to compose or design a painting. Now here's another really good example. This is yours, Rock, and he was dealing with uh, he was dealing with images in a different way. He was dividing them into planes, but still flattening the space. So now here something else begins to happen, which is interesting, and that is not only the image itself is creating positive space, and the space around it is creating negative space. But then you get some positive, negative, negative things happening within the images themselves. So you could say, if I'm working with this shape, then the space around this shape is negative and this shape is positive. So things can shift like that and take on different roles. 
So uh, here he's kind of flip-flopping with the idea of light and dark. And if I'm working with the light, then the dark can become negative and the light can become positive. Here we have, this is a still life, as you see, and very abstracted and everything flattened, all the images flattened. And then we have this realistic, uh, uh, realistic still life for today. And you can see that you, he's working, obviously, with as much consideration for the negative space and how it surrounds the positive space. And in some places, we kind of feel them beginning to interchange. Say, for example, right here, as this falls, as the top of the table falls off here, maybe the top of the table becomes positive, this becomes negative. So it's a way of an artist thinking. An image that you're working within is positive. What surrounds that image takes on uh, our negative. And negative simply means that it's not occupied. So that's the reason, the, I think, that's the reason positive and negative were used. Okay, now I have this here to cover it to make it not so visible, but let's look now at these two. Okay, um, even landscape itself, we see here Richard Schmidt's landscape, even landscape itself can take on that positive and negative. Now here we have a Kandinsky. Kandinsky was using still, see the flat shape, sometimes it feel maybe a little bit of curve to shape where you might see a gradation. But see how it gets all these complex shapes, but then within those complex shapes, the negative takes on a role of defining the positive. So we have this dark here and the light around it. That is at taking the role of negative to define positive. In the landscape, again, the shape that you're working with is the positive shape. So if we're using the, uh, the trees, or, or as we're working with the trees in the house and so on, all those take on the role of positive. The space around them in the sky then becomes negative. Now, why is that important? It's important because often, rather than the positive shape, uh, positive really creating the shape, it does, but the negative space plays at least 50% of the role of shaping it. So we could actually shape this house uh, by shaping the tree around it. Once this tree is shaped, uh, and it shapes this edge, it, it can actually also be used to shape the edge of the house. Same thing right here with this fence uh, post, I guess that's what it is. This space around it actually shapes this. And so that's a, a, it's the same, that's 50% of this mark being made in the positive to define it. Now you might find that a little bit heady, but that does explain, I think, how the, uh, the contemporary, more contemporary thinkers think in terms of we have two kinds of space available to us on a flat canvas. When it's white, we have one thing. That's just the space. But then when you start dividing it, you can begin to think of it as the shape and the space around the shape. And, and if you start thinking and observing the shape of that space around it, then you get the, a deeper and deeper and a, and a, and a more complex idea of how the whole thing falls into place. So when you're looking at a painting, don't just look at the image itself, but look at how that negative space is playing a role to actually shape that image. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMize.com where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.